following podcast has been brought to you by Boys and girls, children of all ages, Banter Club proudly brings to you, it is I, one half of the longest reigning tag team champions of the world, ah, the Angel of Death 6XL, joining me as always, that would be me, former eight-time Ramble Mania champion of the world, and the other half of the longest reigning tag team champions of the world. TJ the Great. TJ the Great. Of course, we are the Banter Club. Mm-hmm. We are here to discuss AEW Dynamite on the Hose Network. Because we've got hoes. No, we got them hoes. They all scattered out within different area codes. And you yeah, know what we got doing? so many hoes that we're going to have. Two beach themed fucking weeks of wrestling. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to a festival next week, the, the, the Fighter Fest. Yep. So, Yo, it's going to be blue next week, huh? Hell yeah. I can't wait. I'm going to make that <laughs> shit cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be here. We got to represent the, for the blue. Yeah, it's going to be my blue. Fucking water blue. What? Yes. <laughs> the elements of what? Yeah, <laughs> like nice clear ocean water. <laughs> uh but of course before we talk about dynamite, mm-hmm. we talk about the news in and out and about the world of pro wrestling. Yes. And let's let's start over in the double double E. There's always shit going on. Blast Blastoise took a took a bump. Blastoise was like, oh damn, WWE, I'm out. Uh, double double E adjacent. Uh, but let's talk about Dwayne Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Rock the Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne the Gill. Dwayne the Gill. Not that one. D- 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 <laughs> <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> um, but it would be hilarious if Dwayne Gill was the replacement for the Rock at the story. They asked him to host the Emmys, and the Rock said no. He turned them down. Um. Wow. It, it's a scheduling conflict. So, I mean, he's got right. a lot of shit going on. Of course, the busiest man in the world, tequila, fucking movies, TV. But uh, Rock said he was honored to be asked, but, you know, he just couldn't do it. Sketch. Um, and now let's talk about someone who is also, I guess, at this point, WWE adjacent. Okay. Mercedes Varnado, who at this Ooh. point, I guess, is formerly known as Sasha Banks. Facts. That's why you she, called it by her shoot. Yes. Um, even on the on the thing they have here for um, the C two E two Expo, the convention, Sasha Banks will be making her first appearance there. Um, I think Saturday and Sunday, mm-hmm. uh, August sixth and August seventh. Uh, they 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 listed her as Sasha Banks in quotation marks, and of course the Mandalorian. Which, yeah, that would be the most likely two things that you would know her from. Uh, but this is this is obviously a big deal as it's her first post WWE major appearance, and I'm sure <laughs> there are going to be people that want to know. And she may be asked, "Hey, what's happening? What's going on? What are you gonna do?" And I, I guess all all will be revealed in due time. But Sasha appears to be moving on. Yep, and, and you know, putting that work in. They got about fifty more Star Wars shows coming out too, so I'm sure she might get called. She might get a call <laughs> from yeah. Disney Plus one of these days. I really enjoyed Obi Wan. I'm gonna be honest with you, Mr. I Ken- like Obi Wan. Mr. Kenobi. You know he did the deal for your boy. Yeah. I, I, I like Kenobi. Uh, I, honestly, Kenobi is my favorite Star Wars character, especially in the prequels. He uh, was. But, I liked him, and I love Qui Gon Jinn. Qui Gon Jinn. Qui Gon. I love Qui Gon. Mm-hmm. He like, was he was my guy. Look, even when I was a kid and I first saw Phantom Menace, I was like, that's ah, whatever. But I I like the dude that died. <laughs> yeah, me too. He was tough. 
It was like, yeah. yo, he was real. He was real. He was the only. Yeah. And plus, he was fucking right about everything. Yo, we got to train this kid and fucking, we can't be so emotionless and shit. Or he's, or he's going to turn to the dark side. He's going to end up turning to the dark side. He was right the whole time. And, and look what happened. Fucking Anakin turned to the yeah. dark side. But he did show up Boop. and show love, though. Spoiler hey, show alert. love. Yeah, spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah, if you haven't seen Kenobi. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, but if you know Star Wars, mm-hmm. then you know what happens to powerful Jedi who die. Yeah. In 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 keeping with the double double E. <laughs> they they are doing their damn SP voting for the for the best WWE moment. And we are down to four moments, and one of these will be the winner for the SBs on July 20th. Um, Cody Rhodes returning to WWE at WrestleMania. Stone Cold Steve Austin giving everybody stunners at WrestleMania night two. Undertaker getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. So I guess his yeah, that talk. was that was up there too. Uh, yeah, uh, and Big E cashing in money in the bank to win the WWE Championship. So I like that yeah. that Big E got this far in a fan vote, especially up against those three moments. That's fucking dope. I want him fucking he gotta get something, bro. I wanna give this man like a hug, a million dollars. <laughs> Word. It's every time I see anything with, with Big E, I'm like, how do you not just look at this dude and be like, that's it, right there. I'm I'm giving him I'm giving him the world. I'm strapping the rocket to him and I'm giving him the world. I don't understand how you don't see that with that dude. But speaking of E, he uh, was talking about the whole situation with his injury and everything. And uh, Rich Holland, Rich Holland sent him a bu- <laughs> a big slab of red meat, and you know had a very prolific apology. <laughs> and and Biggie was and Biggie was like, I hold no ill will toward that man. You know it's, <laughs> what we do is dangerous, and accidents happen. Yeah. So. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm gonna send you over a whole bunch of food. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because I know. I, yeah, no, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, the heart of every man's soul is is is, is food. Yes, <laughs> you feel me. You, you, you boy give Rich us food. Understood. And, you feel me? You give us food, and it's like. Fuck what you mean. Yeah, that, that was that was a peace <laughs> offering on the part of Rich Holland and Biggie accepted. Exactly. And since he's gonna be home, you know, barbecue time, nigga. Shit, Fuck barbecue it, time. Not? Pull up, pull up. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm about to go over there, Biggie. Uh, yeah. But, you should know barbecue for my birthday. <laughs> facts. Uh, but I always like stuff like that in wrestling when you know bad accidents happen and you know the guys are always like, ah, I don't, I don't, you know. It always reminds me of fucking um Draws and D'Lo. But Draz was forgiven and D-Lo, because D-Lo yeah, was d- fucked up over it. Understandably yeah, so. Yeah, he fucking, he feels like he ruined the man's career. Yeah. But then Draz was so like, my brother B, I, you didn't wish no ill will towards me. That shit just happened. Yeah. So that, stuff and like that is powerful true. to me. So. I be wanting to give, the, the, yo, when, nigga, I wish I would have went to one of those conventions earlier on when Draz was still like doing conventions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, tough situation. But um, now let's talk about the Dynamite rating. Ooh, let's see. Please, please, something good. 942,000 viewer average, which is down bad. 3% from the last week. Yeah, um, that's, not, that's not that bad. It's yeah, not, not too bad at all, especially because they're 3-2 rating in the 18 to 49 key demo. Mm-hmm. Was... Number one on cable. <laughs> so That's what we're talking about. I mean, even still with, with shit down, I guess it's a thing that we've talked about and that we've been talking about throughout the summer. Mm-hmm. Everything on TV is down. Because mm-hmm. I guess there's just there's so many other things this summer pulling people in different directions. But for AEW mm-hmm. to still be on top of the cable charge for, I believe, the third week in a row is very mm-hmm. impressive. All right. It's about time to get to the dynamite. Oh shit, you know what that means? Ahem. I would like to know. Are you ready? I believe I am ready. No! I said, uh, are you uh, ready? I am ready. Then, for the thousands in attendance. It's just us. 
And the millions watching at home. Uh, that means you. And because it was my birthday last weekend. Uh, oh, hell yeah. Who? Let's get ready to banter. AEW Dynamite from Savannah, Georgia. We are opening this show with the TNT Championship on the line. The new champion, Wardlow, defends against the man, Orange Cassidy. This is war. One thing I didn't realize that Wardlow's new Mm -hmm. song has, but I realized it when I I downloaded it to put into the thing last week. It has the Wardlow chant in it. Awesome. Yeah, that's fucking I, dope. I never even noticed that. Yeah, I didn't I, notice I, I, it either. I, I, it, sounds, it sounds very authentic and organic on the show. Yeah. I guess because the crowd actually is chanting Wardlow, but it, the song yeah. also has the chance in it, which is cool as hell. Which is, hey, it's yeah. actually very good for them. Yeah, I like that shit. Um, but this match started off extremely <laughs> cartoony, and it was great. <laughs> this shit started off very cartoony. The best friends are all trying to cheat. In, in different hilarious ways. Fucking Cause they're not used to cheating, they're not heels. Yeah, yeah, they're not heels. So so <laughs> so their cheating is comical baby face shit that yep. doesn't the, actually For work. example, chainsaw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Trump pulls out a chainsaw. <laughs> and the ref is like, the fuck? <laughs> he's like, what the hell? <laughs> Where did you even get that from? Get the and hell out of like, here. <laughs> <laughs> What are y'all doing, bro? <laughs> and it's even funnier, like, if you go on Twitter afterward, fucking both Trent and Chuck were like, yo, fuck you, Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> yo, are they so mad? Why are they so mad, bro? Uh, they were they were trying to cheat. They, they, they couldn't cheat. They, 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 they were Team Rocket today. Definitely. Definitely Team Rocket. <laughs> oh. And, and and Meowth is under the ring as as <laughs> Wardlow is chasing Orange around the ring. And it turns out that Orange is leading him, but Wardlow is too smart for that. As he stops and he goes under the ring and pulls out Danhausen. Danhausen is looking at him like, I'm going to curse you. But then he's like, actually, nah, that probably won't even work. And <laughs> he was too, you know what it is though with Wardlow? He was too smart for his own good the whole match. Yeah. Cause he was like, man, I know these idiots. Hold on. <laughs> they don't do something, let, me, let me look for this idiot right quick, because I know he under here somewhere. I know he under here about to do some. Yo, Dan, where, where the fuck? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> you oinks him out from under the ring? <laughs> <laughs> what you doing under there, Dan? <laughs> fucking, you want to talk about Looney Tunes? <laughs> this was Looney Tunes. And then we're fucking, one don't let him go. And he's just like, ah, you're, you're all right. Get out of here, man. Yep, yep. <laughs> then Dan House and scampers away. And... Well, and then Orange takes advantage, um, hits him with a big Rana, and and then we go to we go to picture in picture, and we come back from break. Wardlow's working Orange over, but Orange makes a comeback. He bashes him into the corner, then follows with a big crossbody. Then Wardlow fights him off, but he hits two satellite DDTs, big satellite DDTs, and they only get one. Wardlow kicks out at one, so. Orange, he fires up, gets ready to do the orange punch, but Wardlow slips it, hits the F10 for the one, two, he got him. No. No. Now, Taz, before this, was like, nobody's ever kicked out of the F10, bro. That's it. It's over. And then he kicked out. But I was, when Taz said that, I don't know why, but it it gave me the impression, all right, Orange is kicking out. And then he kicked out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And Like, I never even knew that nobody ever kicked out of the F10. You didn't need to know. He yeah. let you know. That's what Taz is there. <laughs> <laughs> Which I appreciate, but I don't know. It, it feels like they never really built that up. Because he hasn't used the F10 in a while. Because he's been power yeah, bombing to death. He fucking swang that motherfucker across the street. Yeah. It looks <laughs> crazy. Do, 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 blah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but Orange takes Warlord outside with Arana, follows with a tope suicida. Suicida. And then he comes back with the stun dog, goes for the orange punch, and hits the beach break 
for the one, two, he got him. No, there's a near fall for you. Uh, orange goes for another orange punch, but Wardlow catches him midair, drops him with the power bomb, and we get a one, two, and three. It was only one power bomb because Orange Cassidy is a baby face, so Wardlow don't feel the need to do all that. Uh, fun. It was a fun match, though. Fun baby face, baby face, big little match. Good comedy. Good, good hope spot for Orange in the end. I like this. Yeah, it was it was decent. Yeah. I, I had fun with all the comedy aspects of this match. I was crying the whole time <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to all the stupidity. I like how Warlow was playing the smart champion. Um, I like how he he always he was always a st- one just one step ahead. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it took those beautiful power bombs to finally start weakening, you know, Mister Cassidy here. And God damn, he murdered this man and held his fucking shoulders down to the mat. Like hell no, you ain't getting out of this. <laughs> damn him. Fucking kicked his ass, bro. And then, but it was all love. It was all respect. Go ahead. Yeah, post match, he, he picks up Orange. The best friends come back out. Like, hey, what are you doing to him? But Wardlow's like, hey, it's all good. It's all good. Presents his fist for a fist bump. Orange gives him a fist bump. And Wardlow's like, you're tough, man. You're tough. And he and he walks off. Leaves leaves the ring to the best friends. After this, we get highlights from the first AEW All-Atlantic title defense out in Rev Pro. With Pac defending against Shota Uminu. Shooter. Cool as hell that they just showed a whole ass Rev Pro match on Dark. They showed highlights here, but they showed the whole thing on Dark. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was really cool. Shout out to Shooter. Good to see Shooter picking it up and, and getting really good. I like how grungy it looked. Yeah, the dark lighting and everything. It was. Yeah. Now we got the goddamn Jazz, or rather, just Chris Jericho. Yep. Comes he comes out, out in a nice little suit. Yes. Says Eddie Slightly Kingston. Slightly burgundy, a little red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the little burgundy jacket going on. I liked it. I liked it. TJ uh, loves that red. I love the red. Says Eddie Kingston, I'm speaking to you now, not as the wizard, but as the living legend, Chris Jericho. Says, I know why you picked that barbed wire everywhere match. It's because you're a mark for guys like Terry Funk and Onita. But see me, I have actually competed in a barbed wire match. Way back in Canada, I competed in Canada's first ever barbed wire everywhere match. It's true. It's true. He says, Eddie Kingston. (laughs) Dead ass, look it up. (laughs) Yeah, look it up. He says, Eddie Kingston, I am as every bit as si- as sadistic and twisted as you are, and I will show you next week because you won't be facing me. You will be facing the pain maker. Yeah, he said you won't be facing not the wizard, not the sports entertainer, but the pain maker. And I'm yes. like, spicy. I like it. Yes. <laughs> But he says, yeah, Eddie, you said you didn't want to be a liar. Well, you know what, Eddie? I'll say this for sure. You're not a liar. You aren't. But what you are You're a l- is a loser. 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 He said, this man loser. is a loser. And then we cut to the back where we get Eddie's response. <laughs> Eddie's like, he got five minutes, and now you telling me I got a minute? <laughs> Yep, you ain't giving me no time, bro. Fuck y'all. <laughs> yeah. So Eddie's like, listen, man, you bring whoever the hell you want next week because I'm going to make you pay in blood. Look what you did to Ortiz. Take off your hat. Ortiz is like, all right. Yo, man, he, <laughs> nah, he, he, didn't, he didn't tell him to take off his hat. He fucking just yanked the he hat took, off of him. He head. took his hat off, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's, he's there like, you know, when you, when, you, when you fucking with your little brother and your little brother's all fucked up because he got jumped by some dickhead and then you take... <laughs> You, you take off whatever's covering the, the, the giant fucking bruiser or whatever. Right. <laughs> Look what you did to him. And then he's just there like mad, mad, like sad, like, fuck, yeah, nigga, man. why you putting me out there, bro? <laughs> you ain't even got to say it like that, bro. Damn, yeah. I told I you because I hoped you was going to get him back. You know what I'm saying? You ain't have to tell everybody. Damn, yeah. Why are you over here showing everybody? Like, <laughs> Look, Look what you did to Ruby. Yeah, look what you did to Ruby. <laughs> look, look at this. <laughs> broken wrist and she's like... <laughs> And I'm over here like, yo, why are you doing this, bro? <laughs> I want to make you pay, Jericho. <laughs> that shit was hilarious. Yeah, sheesh. Oh, God. The AEW interim world champion, John ah, Moxley, taking on Kanosuke Takeshita. Takeshita. 
That dude is fucking fire, bro. This dude is. Crazy, man, bro. I love how all his matches are like, yo. So he watched Takeshi this last match, and he was like, yo, I want to fight him. Every Takeshi match has basically that's why it's been made. <laughs> yep, it's like, yo, this guy's amazing. I want to wrestle him. Yeah, I want to wrestle this guy. This guy's awesome. <laughs> Oh, uh, so yeah. like Shawn Michaels, but he fucking works like fucking John Cena. Yeah, this dude is, he's great. Takeshi is fucking great. And, you know, same, same as all the others. Mock saw him wrestle Eddie on Rampage and was like, I want some of that. Let me get that. And here we are. They start wrestling. They start some solid wrestling. And then Takeshi is like, nah, fuck you. Let's fight. And he starts throwing, but Mox is like, not yet. Slow it down, brother. Slow it the fuck down. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, bro, you pushing a little too? Bam! Hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then we get a chop battle between the two, and they start throwing. Then Mox cuts him off with a big Larry. And like you said, to catch it up, bumps crazy off of it. Uh, they great, fight. Bro. He's, He's so good. Uh, so they fight to the apron. Mox goes for a pile driver, but to catch it up, fights back. They exchange forearms, and Takeshita drops Mox with a German suplex on the apron. You can see Mox Gorgeous. cover his head like, oh, fuck, this is going to suck. <laughs> but he took it. Uh, then they start trading again, but Mox cuts him off as we head into the break. And as we see right before the break, Takeshita's is bleeding. Leaking. Leaking. Like, he went from slightly bleeding to, I am profusely pouring blood from my face. It's, 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 I look like Eddie Guerrero in that one match. Yes, we are now on the Muda scale. <laughs> so, yeah. We come back. Takeshita is fighting back with some big sprite, sprites. Sprites. Strikes. <laughs> Follows with the diving line. Thirsty beat? I, got, I, I mean, I'm, I'm drinking some, some soda right now. I'm drinking uh, Coke. But, you know. uh, can of Coke. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a sheer drop brain buster. That's Takeshita for a near fall. He goes up top for the frog splash, but Mox counters with the knees, gets the knees up, goes for a rear naked, and chains into the Juju Katami yeah. armbar. Then Takeshi to fight, makes it to the ropes, and then he comes back, hits a big run, and sends Mox outside. Then he follows with a big dive, Tope Cone Hello. And then we go yeah, back in the ring. Had that boy flying. He, he keep flying. He goes back in the ring, hits the frog splash for the one, two, he got, he got him. him. No. No. Uh, they're training again in the ring, Mox and Takeshita. But then Mox pulls him in, hits the Death Rider DDT, follows with the MMA elbows, then the Bulldog Choke, and your winner <laughs> is John Moxley in a hell of a match. An incredible match. I feel like, I mean, William Regal said it on, on commentary. He's like, yo, he's been watching us, bro. Yeah. Like, like he's been going out there and, and legit, you know, Looking at our matches whenever we we start like training or whatever. So this kid is wise, man. Beyond his years, man. And and again, uh, I think it was uh, the man in the mask. Yes, man. In the mask. That he's been uh, wrestling since the age of sixteen. Yes, he has ten years experience <laughs> wrestling from sixteen. Yep. They, they, what was it? He he he. Uh, damn, you know, he he. They they even said where he where he started. They did, but I didn't, I should have wrote it down. It wasn't, the Tokyo, wasn't it the Tokyo? No, it wasn't the Tokyo. Dome. No, it wasn't the dome. Who was it? It was some. It was somewhere in, in important. Yeah, it was. It was an important location. It wasn't the dome, and I don't think it was Corican either. So I'm gonna no, have to. No, I'm gonna no, have to go Corican. back and check. It wasn't it. Yeah, yeah. Damn, what was it? But anyways, it's just this kid is. He's a natural, bro, and I want to see more of him, and I, I can't wait till he gets to a certain point. It's crazy how he can lose every match, and everyone at the end of the match is just talking about him, like he's he's that good. It's like it reminds me a lot of Dante Martin last year, where like they just kept giving Dante these matches with all these top level guys, and it was like he would lose, but it was like, yo, this guy is so good, man. He almost won, bro. He almost won. Yeah, he almost won. That's crazy. He, the, imagine this kid becoming fucking. You know, I was talking about it earlier with, with Big E. Imagine this kid, just boom, grabbing the big one from out of nowhere. Yeah, like, I bit. I bit, bro. And even the crowd, they were cheering like motherfuckers. There was even a point where they were booing because they were like, hey, wait a minute, no, fuck no, we want him to win. Yeah, we like this guy. <laughs> Shit, hey, look, you got to put Takeshi in the gang now. He bled, he yeah. bled and all that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. get, him in the, get him in the BCC. You got to wait till, till d Bry comes back, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know I like fucking. I'd rather yeah. say d Bry. Yeah, d Bry. But, I mean, you know Danielson fucking is going to want to wrestle this dude. <laughs> you know it. 
We got a House of Black promo. Julian's yep. in these now. Yep. Yeah. Is she talking that's all that's the spooky cute. cryptic she's shit, zero. too? <laughs> she gives me uh She's what they should have done with Liv Morgan. Was Liv Morgan ever going to be spooky? Not Liv Morgan. Sorry. Alexa Bliss. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got you, got you, got you. Sorry, yeah, yeah, nah, I don't watch that show anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was mad. I was like, Liv Morgan was spooky when? No, no, no. You know, you know what I mean. It's, yeah, Alexa yeah. Bliss. it's just since it's I don't watch that show anymore, I forget motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> I was like, which one? The blonde one. <laughs> that that don't help. Yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> that don't right. help there. <laughs> You're right. The, the 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 short, cute blonde one. Yeah, Brody King in this is is basically rejecting Darby Allen's praise from last week when Darby mm-hmm. came out. It was like, you, man, you're great. And Brody King was like, man, fuck you. I'm going to get mine by taking yours, Darby. So <coughs> it's, it's beef. House yep. of Black and Darby and presumably Sting. Out comes Christian Cage. And the monster. Jesus. Just so- I ain't even, even going to let him talk. Jesus. Je- How is he still here? He he doing it. He gonna do it again, and you know he gonna do it again. He you know what this man anything. is up to, bro. This is all I gotta say. Right now, he's becoming the big boss man, and I'll, I'll explain more when we're done. Here. <laughs> oh, <D. laughs> I explain more when we're done. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so Christian, Christian says. Man, he doesn't like the Hollywood blondes. He's like, hey, listen, Yo. man, Brian Pilgrim Jr., just like Jungle Boy, you had a father. And, you mm. know, <laughs> people say your father is, is so great. But I honestly, mm-hmm. I'll say he was average at best. Honestly. Fuck you. <laughs> he doesn't match up to a pro wrestling legend like myself. But Jesus. <laughs> I do respect that he shed his blood, sweat, and tears for this business. I respect that. Okay, okay. And I, and, I, and I can speak on his behalf, knowing that he would hate that his final contribution to this business was you, Brian. J- J- Jesus. J- Jesus. J- J- you going to let him do this. Why I you know Brian him do up this? there listening to, to this. You going to allow this? God damn, you know. This man Christian is just walking around. Everyone with a dead father just, my daddy, my daddy, <laughs> where, my daddy. Those stupid God dead daddy. Damn, you know. <laughs> Big Boss Man did that shit to Big Show, and I was like, <gasps> and this man Christian is just fucking doing it every night, bro. <laughs> every night. My daddy, where? My dad. I'm like, yo, stop, bro. You go, you gonna catch the wrong dude. He gonna catch you in the parking lot like this was NXT back in the day. Facts. Don't, don't let Christian Cage find out you got a dead parent. Cause <laughs> Hell no, nah, he gonna hit you with that. My daddy, where? Fuck you, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Then he goes to Griff Garrison, and he's like, uh, I saw you posted this picture on social media, and you've been to put the picture on the Tron. He's like, hey, Luchasaurus, you know, do you think that guy looks like Jungle Boy a little bit? And then Luchasaurus turns, looks up, and then starts marching toward the ring, like, yeah, he does. He's got to die now. Yep. And now we got Luchasaurus versus Griff Garrison, and what do you think happens in this match? <laughs> uh, Death. Yes. <laughs> Poor Griff Garrison is moided. Poor guy. And Poor guy. Post-match, he's going to go put him through the ringside table. But then Pillman steps in like, all right, enough of that shit. And then Luchasaurus is like, all right, you can fucking get it too. <laughs> Christian comes in, mm-hmm. knocks mm-hmm. him out. He puts Pillman on the table, then choke slams Griff through Pillman. Through him. Through oh the table. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I smell a, a broken spine. <laughs> It did look here. disgusting. We're talking about all the injuries that these motherfuckers keep having having this summer, and bro, that don't help. <laughs> right? <laughs> Can't just have Luchasaurus out here killing motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. You know what's crazy, though? Brian Pillman was OD wearing a, a fucking, well, Brian Pillman's dad, <laughs> Brian Pillman uh, yeah. outfit today. Yeah, yeah. The cut jorts, the, the, the jean vest, the, 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 Weird tie dye tiger fucking t shirt. It was yeah. straight up WCW, his dad. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, Jesus Christ, right. you look just like your pops. It's like you did this shit on purpose. He even got the gold chain on. Yeah, yeah. Now we got Tony with the chass who will be mm-hmm. in a shark cage next week. 2.0 is like, we have had enough of cages. How high is the cage? 
Why aren't they in the cage too? What is this? <laughs> Which is actually a good question. <laughs> yep. I find it hilarious that, that fucking Tony D'Angelo, well, fucking Tony, he basically turned into Tony D'Angelo. Fucking, <laughs> uh, what's his, yeah, he turned into straight up Tony D'Angelo. Let me tell you something, right? I'm like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Let me is tell you slowly, something, Shivani. He's, he's slowly devolving <laughs> <laughs> into Tony D'Angelo. I swear to God. Uh, that's what happens, man. But then Daniel Garcia pops in afterward. He, he goes full soldier boy. He's like, really? You didn't copy my whole fucking flow. <laughs> All that tough guy shit. I was doing that shit first. <laughs> oh, so you man. know what? You want to take you want to take my gimmick? I'm going to take your title, Yuta. And and man, Daniel Garcia, you could have been really Yuta, but you chose yep. to be a sports entertainer, yep. my man. <laughs> you yep. chose the you know- sports entertainment life. We got Tony with Hangman, who who says he he's pretty upset about not uh, winning the Royal Rampage. But then Silver and Reynolds walk up like, yeah, you think you're upset? We're upset too. And you know what? We're going to get that damn House of Black. We're going to beat you spooky perverts on Rampage. And then Hangman is like, all right. Let's spooky do it. perverts. <laughs> if anybody knows about spooky perverts, it's the Dark Order. So, yeah. <laughs> Facts. I mean, that was their gimmick in, in the beginning. Yeah, that's how they started. <laughs> they know that spooky pervert life well. Yep. I, uh, I miss that. I, I miss I'm not even going to lie to you. I miss that. Them being spooky perverts. <laughs> yeah, I miss I miss the original campaign and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, with the email mm-hmm. and all that. I do, I do I do miss that that part of it. I feel the like they should have shit. more people come in and out. Yeah, they should they should do that. Like if obviously if you know we're, we're, we're dropping guys or whatever, and you know hangman's because they already technically do it with hangman because they always say hangman's not technically in the dark order, but you know that's his people, so. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, I, they can do that. People can get mad at me all they want because I know I even I love the the one hour rampage run, but I'm telling you, if you make that show two hours and you focus on these group of people and these type on on one show, and you know you're gonna change them and shit, but I'm saying like, and then you fo- you focus on this group of people and these group of characters on this show, and then like I said, you can interchange them, you know, throughout the weeks. Then I feel like it would be a more cohesive and we would get more stories out of it than just what we're getting. Because I feel like I, f- I see so much here. You know what I'm saying? Like all these stories are great. All these, ma- what, what, what is it that's missing? And it's literally, there's all these characters that we started off with that are getting like, damn, you're no attention. And, and they were great characters and great ideas. And they've kind of just like let it fall by the wayside. And I would love to see some of those storylines and ideas get re-sparked and reinvigorated and and shown in a different light on on either Rampage or Dynamite. If they have the two-hour run on on, on Rampage, I feel like that would fix that. I say 90, but you got to do two, whatever. I am Heel JR, by God. I'm coming out of the Heel Tunnel once again (laughs) to join commentary. Uh, He's here. Uh, I like like that JR is now... Basically, fucking Tony Schiavone. <laughs> I'm hour two of Nitro guy. Yep, and it, it makes sense that he's here now because he's got to call an Oklahoma boys match: Jake Hager versus Claudio Castagnoli. Some real Americans. I love going this out crowd, by the way. Yes, love this crowd. They knew what was going on. Immediately, they give a "We the People" chant, which Claudio we the pe- he smiled, bro. Looks, he gives a smile and a nod. Like that's right. Did you see how he came out? Which is so, like so. I pay attention to all these little, little gimmicks. Jake Hager comes out regular thing, you know, you know, the leader in sports and time, and, and you, know, he, you know, and then it plays his little MMA hip hop song. He comes out and yada yada. But then when Cesaro comes out, he's he when when the music starts, he vibes to it. He like waves his finger to it. He runs to the ring. He fucking goes nuts in the ring. He does like a million of the shoulder pump shits that he does with his fist. He goes absolutely insane. And it's like, wow. Imagine they let him be this unhinged in WWE and just let him have one. Not allowed. Say, so yeah, Claudio and, and, and Hager. Uh, Hager goes for the Hager bomb. It is blocked, and then he goes for the ankle lock, but then Claudio counters that, too. Gets him in the ropes for the Tiger Faint Kick, or as you know, he Hell called yeah. it in WWE, the Swiss 1-9. Ooh, yeah. fire. 
So they start trading uppercuts, and you will never beat Claudio in an uppercut fight. So naturally, he takes control. Hell no. Yeah. Ain't nobody beating Claudio in an uppercut. William Regal on commentary was like, Dave Taylor threw the best uppercuts I've ever seen, and Claudio throws them mm-hmm. twice as good as he yep. did. <laughs> he, said, he said he trained them to do it. Yep. And, and, and so, so and he, even he will tell you, even he himself will tell you that, yeah, so I trained him to do it, but fucking Claudio did it, does it better. Yeah. I was like, wow. Like Regal, the Regal whole match is just, over, yo. <laughs> yeah. Again, Claudio ended yeah. my career. Like, he, he's just yep. great. He stomped my head and yada, yada. Yep. Man. And another dope shit is fucking uh, Jim Jim Ross on commentary is also putting him over B. Yeah, 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 big time. They did. I like I like this commentary setup that they have. I like I like how they're doing these boots. Um, so we go to Pip and we come back. Claudio's making a comeback with the big uppercuts. Then he sends Hager to Powder with a big drop kick. Follows him mm-hmm. outside, gives him a big running uppercut, and then a yep. diving crossbody in the ring for a near fall. He follows with a double leg, and then yep. it's giant swing time. So he swings and swings mm-hmm. and swings, does the swing, puts him down, then goes right into the sharpshooter. Uh, JR the calls fact- it the scorpion. What? I was going to say, JR called it the scorpion death lock, which I get because Sting mm-hmm. works here. But yep. Claudio does the sharpshooter because he used to team with a heart. So it's a sharpshooter. Yep. And when, when he did that shit, bro. It bothers me now because there's now I'm like, yo, so many people do so many bad fucking sharpshooters. This man can get a sharpshooter out of a fucking giant swing. What are yep. y'all doing? <laughs> In fairness, he teamed with a heart. <laughs> yeah, you, Heart by he marriage, gotta, but a heart. He got to teach them. He got to teach them. Yeah. Yes. So then 2.0 run down for interference. Hager hits a urinagi off the distraction for a near fall. And then he goes a for the year- ankle lock. Nagi. <laughs> the year Nagi. <laughs> I like that. Some New York nigga you gotta use that as his finish. Boy, shut up. <laughs> um, 2.0 tries to interfere again, but then Claudio takes out Cool Hand Ange, drops Hager with the Swiss death and the Ricola. Ricola, Ricola bomb. <laughs> Ricola bomb gets the win. I always wonder why WWE yep. why he didn't use that in WWE because it's just a power bomb. But yeah. uh, probably Vince is like, oh, it's just a power bomb. I don't like that shit. You gotta hear <laughs> something that's more more impactful. I got this thing. It's called the neutralizer. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, pal. You haven't even seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the name. The name is great. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> it could be whatever. It's just a good name. Great name, right? Fuck yeah. <laughs> what if I just do the Rico line and call it? No, no, I don't like that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't tell him it's the Rico line. He could have did it. If, if he, he, he would have never told them, he would have done it. <laughs> yeah, he would have done it the whole time. <laughs> neutralizer. <laughs> that neutralizer, that's a great fucking, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love how Jim Ross, in, at a certain point, when he does the one of the like throw up catch like uppercuts, yeah. fucking Jim Ross just turns around and goes, just a thing of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Oh, oh, God. Now, we got Lexi Nair with Hook. She asks Hook, is a title shot in your future? And Hook just gives her a look. And he walks away. Because walks obviously, <laughs> Hook will get titles whenever Hook wants titles. And we clearly aren't at that point yet. Yo, you know what would be crazy? He turns on fucking Team Taz. And he's like, I want that FTW title. Uh, it could happen. It could happen. Put Taz in a situation between his boy and his son. His sons. <laughs> his sons. Because <laughs> you know damn well Ricky is also his son. Fact. <laughs> if, you, if you watch the main event of this match, Ricky is his son. <laughs> Yo, yeah. He, he, Taz has said it a bunch of times. Yo, I love Ricky. Ricky's my best friend. <laughs> so, yeah, Ricky's his son. Um, Now, we get a quick, another recap of a match from another company. This one, Miyu Yamashita from Tokyo Joshi Pro. Yes, yes, yes. Thunder Rosa. Mm-hmm. And so that means she's going to get a shot at the AEW Women's title. She's coming over to the States. And with that, we get a Thunderstorm interview. Thunder Rosa, yes. Tony Storm. Yo, Tony Storm looks mad old school 90s. Paul Heyman-esque look. 
I fucked with that whole look, bro. Yeah, that look was cool. That look was it cool. was a mix of like maybe Paul Heyman in the nineties with like some like old school like rough and tumble kind of country dudes in like the mid eighties. It was I liked the whole flow. It was it was dope. Yeah, some dangerous alliance type shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um Bear Rosa is excited about facing Yamashita here in the States. Yeah, you know, she's saying, you know, I didn't get the beat her this time, but I'm looking forward to having another match with her. And then Britt Baker and Jamie Hader interrupt. They're back. Here comes man. the Hater Squad. <laughs> Here come the Hater Squad. Always hating it. Man, listen, man. I, I like Britt Baker, but I'm the best, and this division fucking sucks without me. She says this all the time. <laughs> all the time, man. You got to get a new promo, Britt. You got to get a new promo. And we're, we're, we're in here trying to grow this division. We're yeah. putting new talent and giving people new pushes and shit. And, and here come Britt. Yo, know, this shit is trash, man. <laughs> what are you doing? Stop. <laughs> Stop. Stop being Dan Lambert. <laughs> yeah. It, it goes to a point where, all right, we're past being a heel. Now you're just, like, actively burying people. Stop. <laughs> Calm down. I'm over here. I'm over here like, yo, why are you why are you going off on this poor girl, bro? Like she ain't even she over here killing it on the mic. I never seen <coughs> fuck. I'm putting this shit down. I never seen Thunder Rosa go so fucking ham where Thunder Rosa was just like bah, 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 bah. like she was she seemed like she was ready, excited, uh fucking so hyped to wrestle this woman, and then fucking Britt Baker. You know you guys suck without me, right? This <laughs> division's in fucking shambles. Fuck you guys. Boy, man. It's, it's like, what are you talking about? They doing amazing shit. They wrestling motherfuckers from outside the country and outside the company and all that. Like, what are you doing, bro? Why are you hating, bro? Boy, man. Pull it back. Pull it back. Stinking within the women's division. We got Serena D versus This Is Anna J. J. Yes, sir. I love it, her fucking music, her look, everything. She's great. I love me some Anna J. And she's from Brunswick, Georgia. So she has hometown adjacent power, home state yep. power. As she makes her entrance, she goes and kisses her family, I guess. Yeah, her family's all by ringside. You know, they got a big sign. Mm-hmm. They're waving. Show, she shows mm-hmm. love. Uh, and here we go. She's got to face the professor, Serena Deeb. Uh, so Anna. Yep. She gets an early flatliner, sends Serena to the corner, but Serena slips around, locks her into a big stretch. And then she goes for the Queen Slayer, but then Serena fights over to the ropes like, oh, no, that's death. I got to get out of that. And then she drops Anna with the jawbreaker, and we go to break. Uh, we come out of the pip. Anna makes a comeback, goes for the Queen Slayer again, but Deep ties her up for the cover. Anna kicks it away. Uh, then they go into a backslide sequence, and then Serena goes for a pile driver, but Anna backdrops her, and Serena sits and locks in an arm stretch. I thought that was really cool. Mean. Where, like, she sits back and she starts stretching her arms beyond the back of her neck kind of weird situation. Yeah. That was, oh, that was, that was really was, cool. That was mean. I was over here, like, cringing, like, mm, that does not look comfortable at all. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Anna goes for a boot. But then mm-hmm. Serena locks in the dragon screw, and then she goes for the serenity lock. But Anna catches the leg, pulls her in, and locks in the queen slayer. It was a smooth mm-hmm. transition. She's got it locked in. Crowd's going crazy. They're like, tap, tap, tap. But Serena's just able to fight up and then puts her down, locks in the serenity lock. Anna J taps out. Serena gets the win. Mm-hmm. Taz goes, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I pop for that. <laughs> That's tough. He, he fucked with it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I, I like that the beginning of this match had tons and tons of energy. It was a lot of fast paced action. Boom, 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 boom. Then you know Serena Deeb is back in charge. So she's slow it down, brother. You know, make it you know make it last. Make it feel like you know g- give it depth. And you know as the match is going on, you know it starts picking back up towards the end. And Anna J goes ape shit and. I liked every little way that shit set up. Like there's there are women on this roster who I feel like should should definitely be getting a lot of in ring time because of how well they mm-hmm. work with so many of the other younger girls. Serena's definitely one of them. I wish Emmy Emmy Sakura would yes, get more yes. time, but she gets a lot of time on Dark. But I wish she would get like time on Dynamite. That's what I was gonna say. That's something that uh, commentary put over a lot in in this match that. You know, even though Anna J is the, you know, she 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 is the rookie compared to the two. She's been having so many many matches on dark that she's yeah. been she's a lot cleaner and a lot crisper and a lot of her moves 
look a lot more impactful and she's very different compared to the Anna J of old. And I really like how they put that over on commentary. I really yeah, like how you- it actually showed in the match that she was she was a lot better and a lot more aware, you know, which is good. Yeah. Got JR point point out move execution. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, a few months ago she wouldn't have done that as smoothly. You can see the improvement. And it's like that's that's good stuff to know. Good way to put people over. So yeah, good match, hot finish, hot finish Hell for yeah. sure. But uh post match, uh Serena's gonna attack, continue the attack. But then Mercedes Martinez runs down for mm-hmm. the save, of course. Auntie! Uh, like the commentators <laughs> explain. Yeah. <laughs> they were tagging on Rampage, but then Serena betrayed mm-hmm. Mercedes because she wants the Ring of Honor women's title. So Mercedes is like, you want it? Come and fucking get mm-hmm. it. And, and that was beef. Now we got Tony with Stokely and the baddies asking about Athena and Chris Statlander. <laughs> Jade says, ain't nobody worried about them chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, oh, son. God. <laughs> uh, then uh. then uh, she looks over at Layla Gray and like, what the hell are you doing here? Shouldn't you go get us some more water? And then, uh. <laughs> and then Kira Hogan's like, get out of here. And then I guess Layla, mm-hmm. she'll take it from Jade, but she ain't taking it from Kira Hogan. Yeah, she as was soon about as Kira as... Hogan snaps at her, she's mm-hmm. like, Bitch, what? <laughs> like, yeah, because, you know, it, but it's because of the next person who spoke who actually was like, hey, chill, chill, chill. Yeah, Stokely steps in and is like, hey, listen, listen. You got to trust me on this, all right? Because you know, Stokely oh is for the baddies. Like Wu-Tang. It's for the children. It's for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Wu-Tang is for the kids. <laughs> I this know he's man is the greatest. <laughs> I know he's the children, but you know damn well it, it goes, the, the saying goes, Wu-Tang is for the kids. Wu-Tang for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so the theater, Chris Statler there, I know you got a tag match on Friday. We will be watching very, yeah. very, very closely. Now Excalibur runs down uh, next week's card, Fighter Fest, and uh, Death by Dishonor, Death Before Dishonor. Um, but then in the middle of this, Jay Lethal comes out. He grabs the fucking fourth headset and and just mm-hmm. starts yelling like, "I'm gonna fucking win the title!" And then you oh, can, you heard that shit? I could barely hear that shit. Yeah, because yeah. he he was yelling <laughs> too loud, too close to the mic. He yeah. fucked it up. So yeah, but I caught I caught a bit of it. <laughs> Are you? Uh, I'm like, God damn! Yeah. What are you saying? And then it's funny because he steps away and then you can briefly hear Sotnam sing for a moment like, yeah. <laughs> He's always, <laughs> that's his one line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, either that or new champ. New champ. <laughs> <laughs> he probably said that too. <laughs> he probably just couldn't hear. Yeah, he probably couldn't hear. <laughs> new champ. We got Anna mm-hmm. Jay in the back recovered and Ty Conti yeah. walks in and it looks uh. like we're finally addressing this. We're finally addressing mm-hmm. Ty Jay. Yep. Um, and Ty, she's like, hey, listen, man, maybe if you made better choices, you'd get some more TV time. Cause I don't know mm-hmm. what's up with you right now. And, and it's like, really? <laughs> and she and goes, Ty's- better choices like slamming fucking Ruby Riot's arm into a fucking car door. Yeah. Really? And then Ty Conti's like, Ruby Soho, Anna. sorry. Yeah, Ruby Soho. <laughs> for, for Ty, <laughs> Ty's like, listen, Anna, I like mm-hmm. you. You just got to make better decisions. But like, man, Ty Conti has had like, Zero One matches. match on TV <laughs> since becoming Sammy's girlfriend on screen. Yep. What are you talking about? <laughs> yep. And she's out here having classics with Serena D. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, Anna Jay out here. She done wrestled Jade for the fucking TBS title. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> she's on Dark like damn near every week. Yeah, you don't even wrestle no more, Ty. What the fuck do you mean? Because, <laughs> you know, she's not about, she's about that TV time now that she's here. You don't even get that much TV time. <laughs> Where? She really is, though. She just, she's just being a pain in the ass. She's just standing there talking shit. Or, or standing there. next to Sammy Smiley. Yeah, standing next to Sammy <laughs> Smiley. Anna, Anna yeah. is doing the same thing. She's standing or, next or, to Dark giving, and smiles. Or, or giving Chris Jericho... Uh, <laughs> yeah, giving Chris Jericho <laughs> shit. Alcohol bottles. <laughs> yeah, you in the same position. What do you mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, she gets to wrestle. Like, fuck... <laughs> It looks like there's been enough talk. It's time for the, for the main, main event. event. It's a three-way tag for the AEW Tag Team Championships. Mm-hmm. Team Taz, a powerhouse Hobbs, and Ricky Starks. Versus powerhouse. Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland mm-hmm. versus the Young Bucks. Bucks. Brandon Colors, man. Uh, you love to see uh. it. Young Bucks here? 
Yung Bucks. Uh, you gotta Bucks. Uh. <laughs> That'd be 40 style. <laughs> uh. <laughs> they Tell are from Cali. They, <laughs> yeah, they are from Cali. <laughs> me and the young Bucks out here. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Imagine all the Hebrews. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> funny. What the fuck? <laughs> ah, man. I never Word. know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm too East Coast to understand E40. That's what it is. That's what it is. Because I feel this. I love Too Short, but I never yeah, know I what the say, fuck you talking I about. <laughs> I, I, I understand Too Short more than I understand E40, for sure. Yeah, because he's usually talking about bitches. <laughs> yeah. Biatch. That's all yeah, I get to talk Yeah, you usually talk about some biatch. I'm a pimp. Some shit like that. Yeah, some fucking gangster ass West Coast shit. E-40 be talking some crazy <laughs> shit. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I, I mean, he said, tell him when to go dumb, and he's never. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me when to go dumb so I can understand? I don't understand, man. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, I imagine all the heat. Because he's talking about Jesus Christ growing dreads. So what? shake him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, man, if you say so. <laughs> he did grow dreads. <laughs> so he wasn't lying. Yeah. Wasn't he lying. himself grew dreads. Yeah, he grew dreads. <laughs> so, yeah, main event time. <laughs> Fucking triple thread tag. Um, Brandon's back with the Bucks. You love to see it. He's mm-hmm. doing all his dorky Brandon Cutler shit. Um, and then we here, we get in the ring. We start this out. Matt starts with Keith Lee. And Keith Lee outflips Matt Jackson, so Matt is like, yep. nah, <laughs> get in there, Nick. <laughs> yeah, he does that. That Well, it, it, the whole night is literally, let me show you how big motherfuckers can work like cruiserweights. <laughs> yes. Think about it. Wardlow did the cartwheel earlier with, with the Orange Cassidy. He was like, Orange Cassidy was like, the fuck did he just do? <laughs> <laughs> you can do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking Cesaro and Jake Hager just went at 100 miles per hour in the beginning of that match. Facts, facts. And now we have Keith Lee just being Keith Lee. And it's just like, yo, big motherfuckers in this company be doing some shit. Like, I, fucking even fucking Luchasaurus. But we already know about Luchasaurus. Right? We've been now. Like, it's just crazy. All the big motherfuckers in this in this entire show do some ex- extremely crazy shit. Yeah. So, you love to <laughs> Nick see comes you love in. To see you love to see it. So, Nick comes in, and then Keith Lee goes over, tags in Swerve, and Nick and Swerve just start fucking going. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, Starks comes in, Team Taz is double teaming Swerve as we go to Pip. We come out, Swerve gets the hot tag to Keith Lee, who's running wild on both the Bucks and Starks. Uh, then Bucks Bucks come back, go for the split in the uprights dive, but Keith Lee catches Nick Jackson and power bombs him onto Matt, who was hanging on the rope, so that should look crazy. Uh, then he goes for the spirit bomb inside the ring, but Hobbs tags in, Nick escapes, and now it's time for some big man shit. Yeah. Haas fight between Powerhouse Hobbs and Keith Lee. They collide mid-ring with a huge double crossbody. And then Lee gets Hobbs up top for a superplex. But Hobbs gets him down to the mat. Follows up with the motherfucking lowdown for the <laughs> one, two, he got to know. What the yes. hell? This man hit the lowdown. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hit up my boys from OSW right quick because damn it, D-Lo. <laughs> damn it, D-Lo. It didn't work, man. Shit. <laughs> man. We put respect on D'Lo Brown's name out here. I love you. Yep. Love to see it. Yep. But uh, at this point, I, I can hear someone breathing hard as hell out the, on the on the mic. What is that? Yeah, I have no idea who it is. So mm-hmm. what I'm guessing is someone was outside too close to a mic or something. Yeah. All you hear is. <sighs> <sighs> I'm like, damn, who blown up like that? <laughs> Shit. <coughs> So, Keith, is that you? <laughs> yeah. He was outside at that point. No, he yeah. it was it, it could have no, been. No, he Keith. wasn't? No, it was because he was getting pinned. So I don't think it was him. Who the fuck was it then? Yeah. Damn, I don't know. I don't know. It was crazy, but nonetheless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh Hobbs and Starks hit a double stack cutter face buster combo on Nick for a near fall. Yeah. Then Swerve hits a backbreaker, but the Bucks come in and it's time for a super kick party. Super Ooh. kicks galore. They hit Keith Lee, who pops up 
and he powers up. But then Ricky Starks comes in like, all right, I got you. Let's get him. <laughs> and they hit a triple super kick. And then Starks is like, hey, hey, hey. Let's hit the pose. <laughs> and then the Bucks pose with them. And then they look at each yeah. other like, man, fuck this dude. And they super you kick know what him. It is? Here's what it is. He can't resist the good pose. You he can't. He can't. Got a pose Like I on said him. earlier, that, that whole situation that he did with, with Will Hobbs. You feel me? Man. Even if it look a little sus, he just can't resist a good pose. Oh, I could pose on he these was, hoes? I got a pose like, on oh, these wait a minute. Y'all do a pose. I do a pose. Let's do the pose. <laughs> Let's pose on these hoes. <laughs> oh, he thought he was fly and then super <laughs> kick party. I'll pop Ow. big for that. Boom, 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 big pop for that. Boom, boom, hell yeah. Um, so then Hobbs runs in, hits Rick Knox in the corner, and we've got a ref bump in a three way. Yep. Okay. After this, everything goes crazy. <laughs> yeah, shit got crazy after this. They bring yep. the Bucks bring in the tag belts, and mm-hmm. then Starks comes in, then Swerve breaks it up, and then Swerve mm-hmm. has the belt. And then he turns around and looks at Keith Lee, and he's got the belt in his hand. He's got the contemplation now. And I'm like, why now, Swerve? Why would you do this now? <laughs> Nah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling that he was, he was, th- he was like, am I going to use it? Am I going to do it? Am I going to? And I was, I was conflicted on, is he going to try to use it on Keith Lee or is he trying to think to himself, should I use this? And he's looking at Keith Lee like, Keith Lee, because the way it turned out is he's looking at Keith Lee like, damn, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to, fuck, I, but I want to, I got to hit him. I want to win the match. Yeah. And then he's like, you know what? We'll do it your way, Keith. I'm not going to fucking cheat. And he throws yeah. down the belt. Which I was like, Whoa. see that explanation works a lot better for me because <laughs> mm-hmm. the whole time he's looking at Keith Lee yeah. raising the belt, like, are you gonna hit him with the? Why would you do that? Do you see, but that's the reason why in my head that didn't make any sense. So yeah. in my head, I'm like, he's contemplating. He's not gonna hit him because he's contemplating if he's gonna hit this kid because he keeps looking back. He keeps looking back. That makes so more I'm like, sense. Yeah. Yeah. So rewatch it. You're gonna see. You're gonna see. Yeah. Yeah, because again, yeah, because when I watched, because when I was, I, I watched it live. But when I watching it through, the whole time Swerve is just giving mm-hmm. Keith Lee the look, like, I'm like, wait a minute, wait, wait what? Yeah. <laughs> but, but then yeah, if you notice towards the end, because I was scared for a second too, but then towards the end, you start him see him looking back, looking back. He's like, ah. and then he throws it down, like I'm not going. And then he points at him, he's like, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it for you. And then he goes, he turns around, and he tries to fight him normal, and then he gets knocked the fuck out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he puts the belt down. Bucks take him out. Hit the super kick for the one, two. He got him. No. No. And then they go for the BTE trigger. They land it. BT trigger mm-hmm. lands. They cover one, two. He got him. No. no. Starks and Hobbs both run in and break it up. Yep. And then fucking powerhouse Hobbs starts spine bustering. Powerhouse Hobbs goes on a fucking tear. It was insanity, bro. Just blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, this man is going crazy. He wow, started man. out with the spine mm-hmm. buster on Keith Lee, the biggest one you can get. And yep. then he upped the ante by spine bustering everyone else onto Keith Lee. Onto I'm Keith like, Lee. I'm like, yo, this man is wild. Yep, in succession, just bam, bam, bam. Like, you're the biggest threat. We got to take you out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna take you out with everyone else. <laughs> yep. You ever been so mad you threw one motherfucker on top of another th- motherfucker? Yeah, three times. <laughs> three times. <laughs> so Matt goes for a kick, but Keith Lee comes back, takes Matt's shoe. You took his sneaker. <laughs> yep. And then he's like, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> he hit Matt in the head with it. Yeah. And then he takes out the Bucks, then takes out Hobbs, then Swerve follows up with the dive off of Keith Lee's chest. Mm-hmm. And then Starks try to, tries to take Keith Lee out, but gets pounced to oblivion. And then Keith Lee looks outside and decides it's my time to dive. And he hits the ropes. <laughs> big dive to the outside. <laughs> Fucking my I goodness. You. I told you big motherfuckers and doing incredible shit. clean as hell, shit. too. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. I hear Round of applause for all the big fellas who do crazy shit. I'm, 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 I'm a member of the in gang. in particular, so. like. Thank you. <laughs> physically in like in terms of literal physics i feel like that should not make sense he floated and like he too big to float what the hell he can float he know how to do it he floated he, he got mm-hmm. the leg strength boy he got this it's all about the yeah. leg the leg strength man 
Right. If you're right. a big boy you can, and you got the leg strength, you, you can do some amazing shit. Like, well, you see, <laughs> that you, was definitely Tevin, you see the shit. picture. What do you mean? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> my fat ass floating. You've seen it. It's it's know, it's I doable. Know. <laughs> I know. It's just not a thing that normally happens. Then back in the ring, Swerve hits the Swerve Stomp on Starks for the one, two, three. Your winners <sighs> and what? you, AEW what? Tag Team Champions, Keith oh. Lee and Swerve Strickland. Bask in this glory. We bask. I'm a bask in this glory. Oh, we basking. Man. I had to bring it back to the throwback. That's how much I love this man. This man. Wow. For he is limitless. I did not see this coming at all. But I do not reject it in the slightest. I accept it. I very happily. I love it. I love it. I um, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Give me the love it. Love it. I lock it a lot. I, lo- I, <laughs> I love like this it shit. a lot. <laughs> I fucking love this shit, bro. I was when it happened. I was like, <gasps> we get two of these back to back. Ooh, <laughs> and that whole finish and sequence had me because yeah. for a second, mm-hmm. I thought Team Taz was about to win. I was like, Dead me ass. too, me too, <laughs> me too. You can hear Taz the whole time. No, no, he's gonna do it. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. <laughs> and fucking. From out of nowhere, the team nobody thought was gonna win wins, and I, because remember they were about to break up. They almost broke up in this match again, and it, no, it, that, it brought their whole story full circle and, yep. and put the capper on it. And you know they finally mm-hmm. came together and and won together. Yep. Uh, so and yeah. this is something AW does not do. You feel me? They're all about the established team, the teams that you know. what I'm saying been there for a while. So you would have thought maybe Team Taz or maybe just Young Bucks retain. But they went for it and they did Swerve and Keith Lee. What are they calling them now? Uh, Swerve in our glory. Swerve in our glory. Yeah. So I swerve when I drive. I swerve Ain't that when right, I Jeff drive. Hardy? Let me stop. <laughs> no. Let me stop. <laughs> I swerve when I drive. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, Damn. they, it, like you said, you know, mm-hmm. they, they, they took the time, they weren't established, but they took the time to establish them. Like they told the story with yep. them. They, they gave them wins. They gave them top level matches mm-hmm. consistently. Like, so they built to this, even if, even if you didn't see it, you know, full on its face, like, okay, they're going to do it here. They, they built it. Yep. Um, but just fantastic match. Uh, great win. For Swerve and Keith Lee. Definitely, definitely. Um, it, it's always weird to me when they fucking do ref bumps in three ways because it's like they should be no DQ. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I don't understand why I, they did that, that but sorry. I feel you. And I guess with the Swerve mm-hmm. spot, with, with him in the belt, mm-hmm. that you have to have like a ref bump for that so you know he can be yep. in the ring with yep. the belt and everybody knocked out. And I, yep. I guess it makes sense. And it gives that that story within the match of that will he, won't he. Yeah. So that when they actually win, you bite and you bite hard. Yeah. Pause. Because I, <laughs> man, I was bite. This this, this yeah. last five or so minutes of false finishes. Bit. At, at one point, I thought every <laughs> single team in this match had it. I was like, all right. Bucks mm-hmm, retained right mm-hmm. there. BT triggered. No, they kicked out. And then fucking uh, Starks and, and Hobbs hit the combination. I was like, oh, shit. They got it. No. And then Swerve and Keith Lee finally get the win in the end. I was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what a great fucking finish to Dynamite. Keith Lee also cut a promo after the show. Uh, not even a promo. Like, he, he spoke to the people. He was talking about his friend uh, who was diagnosed yeah, yeah, with yeah, cancer. Yeah. And, you know, he dedicated the, the match and the win to him and said, you know, I'm going to bring my ass over there to see you as soon as I can. You know, just really emotional and yeah. just, you know, That win was as much for him as it was for, for, for his friend. So, yeah. God bless. Yeah. So, I mean, shout out to Keith Lee. Shout out to Swerve. Two guys who, yes. you know, you know, they, they, they were, were at WWE before and both of them were let go. And both were guys that virtually everyone looked at like, how do you not have something for, for Swerve? How do you not Facts. have something for Keith Lee? Mm-hmm. And here we are now in AEW, tag champs. In the best tag division in the world. In the world. Facts. 
Incredible. I'm I'm very elated for these fellas. I'm I'm really Absolutely. really really elated for these fellas. Like I'm so happy for these dudes like just to see where they came from and to see a guy like Keith Lee who I can relate to so fucking much, bro. Like I don't know, man. Like this is this is really really like really good, man. Like ah, it's, wow. I I love the fact that, because Swerve was another dude who I always had fun with, remember? Yeah. Back in, in NXT days, back with our boy AJ Francis. Yeah, yeah, Also, man. I got love for. Yeah, and then it's like- to see Keith Lee come in here and kill it. Yes. This was great to see. Uh, it's, mm-hmm. The Young Bucks really do give you your best match as a tag team. They really do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get in there with the Young but Bucks, then you're doing I- your best work. Credit credit to 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 um Will Hobbs and and and, and, and uh, Ricky Starks too because for fuck's sake them if it wasn't for them yo I thought Hobbs in this match was incredible like Hobbs, Ricky too Hobbs is a beast. Ricky too like but no nah, but, but we know about Ricky yeah that's what but I mean Will Hobbs finally got to do shit that's what I mean like we know Ricky's <laughs> yeah. great but like Hobbs I mm-hmm. thought he shined so much in this match mm-hmm. uh, I just, love Hobbs like you could these guys are the future. Uh, yes. Team Taz, even Swerve and, and, and Keith Lee, those mm-hmm. guys, these all four of those guys are just incredible talents, and and yeah. they they got to put on in the best possible way in this main event. This was great, and I'm I'm pretty sure I wish Hazel were here because I, I would have asked him, you how long was this match? Because it felt quick, but the fact that I'm like, yo, wait a minute, we only had like three or four things before this. You feel me? Yeah. How how did we get so fast? So this yeah. match must have been long, but it felt quick because they they did it right. You feel me? So like it just everything just banged. You feel me? So it was going and going and going. So there was no like moment of like let's have a quick breath. You know, every time they had a quick breath, it's because somebody else was doing something in the ring, which is a great thing. That's a great thing about having matches like this where it's like three different teams because then everybody gets a little break here and there, and they can just go. You feel me? They just go, 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 go. Ain't nobody better at structuring multi man matches than the Young Bucks. They Hell they yeah. know how to do it, man. They know how to do it. Um, but yeah, that's dynamite. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought this was a really good show. Strong in ring, and yes. then like the big cap at the end with this mm-hmm. tag title mm-hmm. switch. They big knew exactly the what end. they were doing. They knew exactly because yeah. I was like, yo, why are they doing the tag matches the main event? Yeah, like when I saw it was the man, I was like, all right, it's probably going to be a great match. Yeah. But I, like I thought the whole time, Bucks are going to win, right? Because yeah, got to. Because but- I'm over here like, why is Mox in the middle of the show? Something's yeah, going to happen at yeah. the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But my thought was Team Taz. Nope. <laughs> to be honest, I thought Swerve and Lee were going to implode. And then they didn't. Because there was a point in time here too where like, well, Hobbs was working great with with uh, Keith Lee, and I'm over here like, hmm. And then you know, Swerve did what he did, but I was I was I, you know I was I was unsure, you know. And you know, I like the fact that they put it as the main event because what we got at the end was fucking glorious. <laughs> and they paid off t- again. Like it, AEW really is good, but you know when it comes down to it, taking all the story elements from before and throwing them back in, and the big payoff and making it feel like a big deal. And this this definitely felt like a big deal. Uh, so yeah, very good dynamite, fucking Extreme, great main man. event, yeah. fantastic end. You love to see it. You know, I went now into we got the- Fighter Fest next week. Yeah. Part two. <laughs> Part two, Fighter Fest. Yeah, this, is, this was technically Fighter Fest. Yeah, this was Fighter Fest as well, but you know. <laughs> Next week we got part two. <laughs> part two of Fighter Fest. You know, this one's this this one's orange. orange. Next week is blue. Yes. Blue. <laughs> blue. What is their obsession with orange and blue? They like those colors, man. I don't know. What colors was what colors was 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 forbidden though? Orange and blue. Taz been up in the fucking graphics offices like, yo, you know what you got to do for this, bro? He used to, he used to make the t-shirts for ECW. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so he might actually be good at graphics. And, but I realized that I'm like, you got fucking Fighter Fest. You got fucking, uh, you know, Rampage. You got fucking, like, damn near every other show has some type of orange and blue in it. And I'm like, what are y'all doing? What's going on here? 
Yeah, man. <laughs> I like those colors too, but I'm from New York. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell him so. What I got to tell him? Where to find us, B? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, you already know where to find us. Find us on Instagram at Ramble Mania Show and at Banter Club Podcast. Find us on Twitter at Ramble Mania, Facebook.com slash Ramble Mania Show. Also find our group there, Ramble Mania Show's Banter Club, where we and the other wrestlers, podcasters, and everybody we associate with post all that goings on, all yeah. that's going down. As far as audio goes, wherever where audio is found, that's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Anchor, TuneIn, Overcast, everywhere your podcasts are found, search Ramble Mania Show or Banter Club. As far as the visuals go, of course. We are on Spotify video, twitch.tv slash Ramble Mania Show. Or on YouTube, search Ramble Mania Show or Banter Club. When you get here, like the videos, click subscribe and click the bell so that when the new content drops, it goes, it goes straight, straight to, to you. you. That's for me personally. Find me on Instagram at TJ the Great One. That's TJ the G R, the number eight, the number one. And find me on Twitter at TJ the Great. That's TJ the G R, the number eight. It's as simple as that. TJ the Great Two. Kid. You'll find me on Instagram at the number six, the letter X, the letter L. That is at six XL. You gotta go check out all the crazy shit I did for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh and you can find me on 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 uh what's the name of this shit? Twitter at S Double I Double X Ain't I Great. That is at S I I X X you all ready. And, and you, you can find all of us on something called hmm. TikTok, TikTok, so here's TikTok, and on there you just search for Ramble Mania Show or you click at Ramble Mania Show, and we'll, 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 we'll be there, showing you all the funny things that we did throughout the week. Unfortunately, this week we, we didn't get to do it because fucking life was fighting us. Yeah, life be fighting. And we were over here like, what the fuck? What is, what is going on here? Everything was going left. Like I was, I was worried that I, I, if we'd even have a thumbnail for this damn show. <laughs> right, we almost didn't have a thumbnail. The shit almost didn't go up on fucking time. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a hot mess. But thank you guys for sticking with us and showing love. Yes, we we greatly, greatly appreciate. It. Love you guys. I, I'm gonna say this right quick: like, share, subscribe, because y'all need to subscribe. I see y'all all liking the shits. See y'all watching the shits. You know what I'm saying? But you got to hit that link. You feel me? You got to throw a little comment. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you got to subscribe. I mean, subscribe. <laughs> because them YouTube algorithms work funny ways. And, you know, we want we want y'all to be able to see us the moment we go up. So, you know what I'm saying? Get on YouTube, it. YouTube be trying to play it, brother. So, help us out. Yeah, yeah. With all of that stuff out the way. We're going to give you beautiful people out there by the name of the BC Aliens. Uh, our Panther Club loyalists with a little something we like to call a uh, too sweet. Too sweet. And a good fight. And a uh, good night. Black and black and black, 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 black and 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 black. Stokely is for the kids.